Hey, Lake Point Junior Highs. Good morning and welcome to our family interactive experience. My name is Pastor Ethan, and I'm so pumped for what's about to happen this morning. Now, before we get started, there's only one thing that you need to know. This family interactive doesn't work without a parent participating with you. So, look around. Is mom or dad watching with you? Or is it just you and maybe a sibling? Or is it just you? See, the only way not to have fun this morning is to watch this without a parent. So if it's just you watching and mom or dad is watching the main gathering on another device, hit that pause button now and quickly go and get them. Parents, if you're already watching, thanks for tuning in. It's our heart here at Lake Point for you to be the spiritual leader of the family. And so I love that you're here participating and walking your junior high student through this family interactive experience. It's a great way to bring the family closer together and have a window into your child's faith development. And so thank you for partnering with us. Junior high students, parents, buckle up because we're about to dive into our interactive experience in three, two, one. We are in a short two-week series called Undefeated. I don't know if you've never been beaten or you've never lost at something, but that feeling is the best feeling in the world. I remember in high school, I was on the wrestling team and I was in this Southern Ontario tournament and I was doing really, really well. And for the entire day of, the, of, of that tournament, I was undefeated. I had won every single match of the day until the finals. It was the match for first place and I was so amped up. My adrenaline was pumping. I could see myself standing on the first place podium holding up my, my gold medal in the air. I, I couldn't wait to go home and, and tell all my friends that I was the undefeated champion. And so I walked onto the wrestling mat ready to take the title but the match went by so fast. I mean, I don't even think it lasted longer than a minute. And when the ref blew the whistle, I found myself defeated. I had lost. I went from feeling on top of the world, being undefeated, to feeling like the world was crashing around me. I think we all know how bad it feels to be defeated and separated from the things that we want to be connected to when we experience defeat we often also experience separation. L let, me, let me tell you what I mean by that. The, the trophy, the gold medal, it feels so far away. When we're defeated, we're separated from that, that end goal. Maybe what we were expecting to happen and it didn't happen the way we thought it would. There's this separation of th this feeling that, ah, oh, we didn't hit that mark. And so sometimes defeat leaves us feeling separated. It can even leave us feeling separated when it comes to our relationships, even, even from you know, other people and, and from God. It can leave us feeling separated. We, we know that God created people to have a relationship with Him and that we aren't meant to live our lives feeling defeated and that separation isn't part of God's plan. And so this morning, we're gonna discover through our teaching video that, that because of Jesus, separation is defeated. But before we get to our video, I wanna see if I can stay undefeated at something. I actually wanna challenge you to a finger snapping competition. I'm gonna see how many times I can snap my fingers in 15 seconds and then you're gonna pause this video and see how many snaps you can get in 15 seconds. 
Make sure you get it on video and post it to our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group because um, I want to see if, um, if you can beat me. Okay, I'm going to pull out my phone. I'm going to set a 15 second timer and I'm going to see how many snaps I can get in 15 seconds. Okay, here we go. My timer's open in three, two, one. Oh, okay. My fingers are, are really sore right now. Um, I, I counted um, I counted 52 snaps in 15 seconds. It's your turn now. Press pause, see how many snaps you can get in 15 seconds, and post the video to our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group. All right, give your hands a break and get cozy on the couch as we jump into our undefeated series. In a moment, you'll watch a video that will walk through this idea of Jesus being undefeated, that because of him, separation is defeated. After the teaching video, one at a time, you'll see a series of discussion questions on your screen. These are helpful questions that your parents will ask to create a meaningful discussion around the topic. Feel free to press pause and take as much time as you need to walk through each question. I'll check back in with you before and after the discussion questions to provide you with some further instructions. So focus your attention, friends, to our undefeated series. Hey friends, we're kicking off a series called Undefeated today. You've heard that word before, right? It means you've never been beaten. You've never lost. You're the current and constant champion in whatever battle or contest you're in. Maybe you hold the highest score in your favorite video game and your friends have no chance of taking the title from you. Maybe you've been first chair in your section of the band for the last three years of middle school. Nobody's taking that spot from you and that makes you undefeated. Or maybe you've had an undefeated season on your team. Nobody could take you down, could they? Or maybe you haven't actually been undefeated at something, but you dream of it because you know how good it would feel. You see other people celebrating when they're undefeated and you want to experience that too. I've experienced that. Do you know what I'm undefeated in? No one has more dog pictures than I do. Let me show you what I mean. I mean, look, look at this face. Who wouldn't wanna take a million pictures of this dog? I am undefeated in dog pictures on my phone. You know why I think people who have experienced the thrill of being undefeated like the feeling so much? Because we all know what it feels like to be on the other end. We all know how it feels to be defeated, to lose. We know what it feels like to be separated from the victory we want to experience. Because honestly, that's really what defeat is all about. Being separated from the thing you want to be connected to. In a way, we put that thing we want on a pedestal above everyone else. When we don't get what we've placed on the pedestal, we feel separated. You wanted to win the big game, but you were separated from the title of champion when you lost. You wanted to get the award for being at the top of your class but you were separated from it when another student took the spot. And you wanted to be the head cheerleader or principal dancer, but you were separated from that dream when you didn't get the part. Often when we experience the feeling of defeat, we also experience a feeling of separation. It seems like we've been moved apart or away from the thing we really want. Truth be told, we experience separation from people in all kinds of ways in our lives. Maybe your parents are separated right now. You don't know if they're gonna get back together at all. Maybe you've experienced separation from a best friend or close family member who moved away. You used to be close, but the distance has caused more than just physical separation between the two of you. Sometimes separation happens even in places like church. Your small group leaves you out of the group text on purpose, or a friend who talks to you at school won't speak to you here. In those cases, you feel separated from people in places where you thought everyone was supposed to accept you. Maybe you even feel separated from God. You're not sure if you believe in him, so the idea of being connected to him doesn't really make sense to you. Or maybe you've made choices or done things that you think have defeated you in God's eyes. And because of that, you feel far or even separated from him completely. No matter what the source of your separation is, the result is usually the same. When we're disconnected from something or someone who we want to be connected to, we feel hurt or frustrated or sad or lonely. The connection is lost 
and ultimately, we feel defeated. But here's the good news. We aren't meant to live our lives feeling defeated. Separation wasn't part of the plan. In fact, the Easter season is about celebrating God's plan to defeat the pain of separation once and for all. Before we dive into all that, let me give you a little background to this whole thing. When God made the world, he created people to have a relationship with him. He created a garden and two people, Adam and Eve. The garden was like heaven on earth and God himself lived there with Adam and Eve. God had a relationship with Adam and Eve and was physically near them. But then Adam and Eve chose to not trust God and his plan for their lives. They decided to do the opposite of what God said and they sinned. And that sin, their decision to not follow God's best for their lives caused separation. Adam and Eve were no longer fit to be in the garden with God and they had to leave. After that, things looked different. A lot of people tried to get back to God, but failed. There was a separation because of sin. Actions, mindsets, and choices that hurt us and others and keep us from the best kind of life and understanding of God. But God wouldn't have it. He wanted his people to be able to come close to him like he had originally planned. So God told his people to build a tabernacle, which is just a fancy word for a tent. Every detail and design of the tabernacle had significance and it was a really special place. But the most amazing thing was God himself chose to dwell there. God made a way to be close to his people, just like he had been in the garden, just like he had wanted from the start. But there was still a big problem, sin. And that sin caused separation between people and God. Even though God was able to be closer to his people by living in the tabernacle, he was still physically separated from them. Now stick with me here while I explain. The tabernacle that God told his people to build, it had a lot of details, but the basic layout is actually pretty simple. There was an area called the outer court. It was where people came to worship. So anyone who was a believer was welcomed into the outer court. Believers weren't, however, allowed into the tent of the tabernacle. This space was reserved only for the priests of the time because it was considered sacred. Within this tent were two additional rooms. One room called the holy place led into the most special and sacred area of all, the most holy place. Why was this the most special and sacred place of the entire tabernacle? God himself lived there. But because of sin, people like us couldn't enter into this space. Our sins kept us from getting close. Once a year, only the priest was allowed to enter to ask forgiveness for people's sins. And just to make sure everyone understood the separation between God and humans, God instructed that a veil or curtain be placed as a barrier to separate the most holy place from everyone else. It was a physical representation of the separation caused by sin. Okay, now enter the Easter story. Easter is all about God sending his son, Jesus, to earth to live and ultimately die among us. But his death wasn't ordinary. Let's read what the Bible has to say about it. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So what does this mean? Why exactly did Jesus have to die for our sins? Jesus died on the cross with the weight of all sin on his shoulders. He took the payment for all of our mistakes and the burden for all of our sins. Why would he do that? Because he loves us so much that he wanted to make a way for us to be close to God once again. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for all of our sins, for all of the things we do that don't honor God and the times we don't choose God's best for our lives. And when Jesus died, something amazing happened. Remember the tabernacle we talked about a few minutes ago? Well, by Jesus' time, the tabernacle had been replaced by the temple, which was a bigger, even more detailed place where God himself lived. Let's read what Matthew, one of Jesus' followers, wrote about what happened at the temple when Jesus died. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. At the very same time that Jesus was dying, when he was ending our separation from God because of our sins, the physical curtain that separated everyone from God in the most holy place tore straight down the middle. The physical separation ended because Jesus ended our spiritual separation from God. That's what we celebrate, the end of our separation from God. Because of Jesus, separation is defeated. Isn't that amazing? God loves us so much that thousands of years ago, he sent Jesus to make sure that separation was no more. The curtain was torn and the connection between God and us was restored. Because of Jesus, separation is defeated. And when we believe in Jesus, 
we never have to worry that sin will keep us separated from God again. So today, if you're feeling separated or disconnected from God because of mistakes in your life, or choices you've made, or sins that are weighing heavily on your heart, know this, God loves you so much that he made a way for you to be close to him. He paid the highest price to make sure that you wouldn't have to feel separated from him. Maybe you need to acknowledge this truth in your life by confessing the things that are holding you back from God. Ask God for his forgiveness for the things that you feel are separating you from him. Thank him for the fact that separation doesn't remain between you and God. Because of Jesus, separation is defeated. And that means your relationship with God can be right no matter what you've done. Or maybe you're not quite sure what you believe when it comes to this whole Jesus thing. You've never thought about the weight of your choices or mistakes and the way they might be holding you back. If that's you today, consider what your life might look like if those choices didn't have to separate you from God. Talk to your small group leader about what it might mean to take a step toward the God who loves you, forgives you, and wants to be close to you. What we celebrate is the fact that because of Jesus, separation is defeated. As you head out, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing in my life that I feel separates me from God? What a great reminder that we never have to worry that sin will keep us separated from God. God loves us way too much to keep us distant, and so he made a way for us to be close to him. Maybe throughout the video this morning, you've been thinking about some things that hold you back from God. The good news is, is, is because Jesus defeated separation, your relationship with God can be made right no matter what you've done. So today, if you're feeling separated or disconnected from God because of mistakes in your life or, or choices that you've made, you can acknowledge this truth and confess the things that are holding you back from God. Ask God for his forgiveness and thank him that separation doesn't remain between you and him. So what's one thing in your life that you feel separates you from God. Let's talk about that this morning through the following discussion questions. Parents, this is where we turn things to you. In a moment, you'll see questions on your screen. Please press pause and take the time you need to facilitate meaningful conversations with your junior high student. Complete the discussion questions and then come back to this video for some closing remarks. I hope you had some meaningful conversation together around this idea that because of Jesus, separation is defeated. Before we close today, 
I wanna remind you that on the Lake Point app under the Family Resources section, we have daily devotionals available that go along with our Undefeated series. Also, don't forget to upload your video of you trying to defeat my finger snaps to our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group. If you aren't part of that group, just search Lake Point Junior High on Facebook, request to join, and I'll be sure to add you to the group. To close our time this morning, take the next two minutes um, and, and pray together as a family. Have a wonderful week, friends, and we will see you next time.